The Samurai has a full color 800 by 480 resolution LCD touchscreen interface, which also doubles as a playback monitor and preview monitor. Other than the physical power button to turn the Samurai on, all functions of the Samurai are controlled through the touch interface. Let's take a look at the menu button. The first thing you do with a new unit is set the date and time. Very easy to do, very quick. You can select the format of the day, month, year to your liking and save that. Uh, Samurai Info is going to provide the firmware version number as well as the unit serial number. Looking at time code, this allows several options of uh, time code for auto restart, HDSDI time code, time of day, or record run. You can choose drop frame or non-drop frame, as well as reset the time code here. Next is scene and shot. Every time you make a recording in the Samurai, the file name includes a scene number and a shot number, as well as sequentially numbered take numbers, which are automatically generated with each new file. Display options allows you to adjust the brightness of the LCD screen. You may want it darker or brighter depending on the environment you're using it in. Power off is kind of obvious, but I will mention that you have to hold it for several seconds to power off the unit. This keeps you from accidentally bumping it and turning the power off. Going back to the main screen, if your crew is running multiple Samurais, you'll want to give each unit a unique name. This will identify the source of the clips later on during post-production. Just click on Samurai, and then you can give that a custom name and save it. The display at the bottom right shows the remaining record capacity for the hard drive you have installed. Selecting that option shows the hard drive make and model, as well as the capacity, and there's also an option to format the hard drive, which you'd want to do with a new hard drive, and only takes a few seconds. Note at the top center that the current record format is ProRes HQ, and that'll give just under five hours of record time on a 500 gigabyte drive. Selecting ProRes HQ toggles it through the other options. ProRes 422 will provide almost seven hours of record time, and ProRes LT records up to 10 hours on a 500 gigabyte drive. At the top left, I can see the current input video format, which is 1080i 5994, which matches my source video. At the top right, we have the battery status for batteries one and two. The battery in orange is the one currently being used. It shows the current uh, status and voltage of each, and I can simply switch batteries by clicking on it. Atomos uses a power looping technology that automatically switches seamlessly from one battery to another. When one gets run down, it switches to the fresh battery for uninterrupted recording. The included batteries will provide over four hours of record time. At the bottom left, I have the audio display. Samurai is capable of recording 12 audio channels through the HDSDI input as six stereo pairs. Small level meters are included for each channel. Going to the audio interface, there's a headphone level adjustment slider at the bottom. It's for monitoring your audio. I can see level meters for the 12 input channels, and there's a record button for each channel, so you can mix and match which channels you want to record. The headphones can only monitor two channels at a time, so you can manually select which two channels you'd like to monitor. If you enable the analog input, you then have gain control over that input, as well as the headphone monitoring, of course. The timecode controls can also be accessed by simply clicking on the timecode indicator rather than going through the menu, so that is available for quick access. Pressing the monitor button brings up a full screen, full frame rate color display of the incoming video signal. Again, with audio monitoring at the lower left and headphone adjustment level at the upper left. The three blue circles on the left side are to enable the blue only mode, which provides a black and white display using the blue input channel. This is helpful for adjusting exposure on the camera and checking for noise in the image so that you can adjust your camera accordingly. I'll turn that off and note that there's a record button at the bottom right. I can simply press that and begin recording video to the ProRes codec I set on the main screen. You'll notice there's a red record indicator at the upper right as well as the running time code to let me know I am recording video. While recording, I can return to the main screen I can even go into the menus while continuing to record. You'll notice on the main screen the record button has turned to a stop button. I can press stop here or return to monitor and use the stop button there. So now I've stopped recording. 
I can go back to the main screen and pressing the play button allows immediate playback of the captured clip. The clip can be reviewed on the Samurai screen or on an external monitor using the HDSDI output of the Samurai. Pressing play brings up the list of clips that are currently on your hard drive. And notice the naming convention includes the device name, shot number, scene number, and sequential take number. I'll select a clip for playback. This brings it up immediately. Again, I have the blue only mode available. Headphone adjustments. And on the bottom, on the progress bar, I can manually select any point in the video for random access. Note that during playback, there's buttons for 8x and 64x playback speed, forward and backward. When pausing the playback, these buttons change to frame advance forward, frame advance reverse, and jump to beginning of clip, and jump to end of clip. So very flexible playback options for reviewing your footage. The Atomo Samurai 10-bit ProRes field recorder is now available from Safe Harbor Computers. 